have been passionate about um, conservation since I was a kid and I've always wanted to study wild cats and I knew I think before I was 10 years old that I would get a PhD and work in work abroad away from the United States studying cats so that I could promote their conservation. So this project um, is uh, was, was planned to happen over several years of collecting data. So because it is very difficult to trap cats, um, it's a very slow process to actually capture all the individuals we need. So it's taken a lot of patience and we have at least several months of field work just to capture the rest of our caracals. And then because we're studying their diet and tracking them while they're radio colored, we expect to finish the field work around the end of December. And then we still have the genetics to, to do on the animals and um, as we collect more samples to continue with the pesticide exposure testing. So the goal is now to capture eight more caracals in the southern half of our study area where we'd sampled the least amount of individuals and make comparisons between areas where there's less urbanization and more urbanization and see how that's impacting the animals. So that's also going to require about a year of data analysis. One of the things that is part of this project is doing a genetic study and our results right now are showing that the caracals are isolated from genetic exchange with other populations and so they're losing their genetic variation which could impact their health over the long term. I I feel that one of the values of doing research in urban areas is that if we're able to communicate our results with the general public in an interesting way, then they become invested in the biodiversity that they find in their backyard. So it's a great way to actually promote conservation in urban areas. Ultimately, that is my end game, is how can I creatively impact conservation in a holistic manner, not only through research and science and getting the word out to scientists, but also with the general public and um, community members on a local scale. But these issues apply to more than just Cape Town and more than the Cape Peninsula. You know, we're seeing similar patterns that are halfway across the globe in the United States. So the impacts of urbanization are occurring on a global scale and what can we do on a global scale to mitigate those effects.